Uh, thank you, Jim, so much for inviting me to this for the Ripon Society of Franklin Center. Um, and thank Tim Daly and other members of the Creative Coalition for joining us here today. Whether it's film, television, theater, dance, singing, painting, drawing, sculpting, writing, etc., the arts enrich our lives and our culture. I can't imagine what our lives would be like if we couldn't listen to music while driving in the car, watch TV or go to a movie with family and friends, admire a piece of art, or whatever it, and, and whatever it scribbles on a piece of paper that your child has made. I've got a bunch of those. I've got four kids. We frame them, hang them on the wall. Um, so furthermore, I don't think there's anyone in this room who doesn't have a memory that is somehow brought to mind when you hear a certain song. I mean, everybody can hear a certain song, though I remember where I was, or I, this, is, this reminds me of this event in my life. Uh, or see a certain movie or a TV show or ex experience some form of art. I myself, and I was talking with Tim about this, are particularly fond of show tunes. And, you know, a lot of people don't know that ab about me. Um, and, and when I was a surgeon, people made fun of me for it. Uh, because I was, a, I was a heart surgeon, and so whether you know this or not, surgeons play music in the operating room during, the, during your surgery. Uh, and I tell people that, and they're like, really, during my surgery, you're listening to music? I'm like, yeah, of course we do. Um, and so, you know, I, I got into that because when I was a kid, in the summertime, we went camping uh, almost every week, close to a little town called Sullivan, Illinois, and they had a little summer stock theater called the Little Theater on the Square, literally. And it had... Uh, things like Oklahoma come through or Mame and the showboat the kind of the classics right the classics came through and my mother brought me to all those she also uh, loved the opera so we we did that um, so you know th that's when I hear a show tune today I still remember as I was pointing out I still remember sitting there in that summer theater with my mother uh, and watching that when I was a little kid and it brings back really fond memories uh, arts are important to our culture, and I think law to, that as lawmakers, it's important that we encourage uh, creativity and the arts. That is why the Kennedy Center, Wolf Trap National Park for the Performing Arts, and programs like the National Endowment for the Arts exist. However, the most important thing we can do is continue fostering crea creativity uh, uh, to ensure that future generations can discover their artistic passions. One small way that we do that through congressional offices, we, and Jim mentioned that we have a congressional art competition every year, and if you walk the tunnel between Cannon and the Capitol, you'll see those, those, that art. Uh, and to me, if you've seen it, you'll be amazed that these are high school kids. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it is amazing. Every district has this competition. We've had ours, and we'll be awarding the, the person, um, the, the winner, and have theirs hang there for a year and uh, in the U.S. Capitol. They also get a free trip to D.C., uh, you know, to, uh, to see that. So that's why the work of the Creative Coalition is so important. So it's, it's an honor to be here. But our special guest today is a veteran in the creative community and has worked ex extensively as an Emmy-nominated actor, producer, director, stage actor. Uh, we were talking about today what his next project is. He's known for portraying Henry McCord, husband of the Secretary of State in the CBS drama Madam Secretary, and as Joe Hackett in the NBC sitcom Wings. Tim, yeah, you can talk about that. Yeah, 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 hey, Tim Daly, hey. Come on, give it up. <laughs> um, Tim Daly began his professional career while a student at Vermont's Bennington College, where he studied theater and literature and earned a Bachelor's of Arts degree. Upon completing his education, he went to New York to further pursue his training in acting and singing. He landed his initial lead in the ninth role in the 1982 movie Diner. And has since remained actively involved in television, theater, uh, and film. From 2008 onward, onward, Tim has served as the president of the Creative Coalition guiding the advocacy group as it addresses matters that are of significant relevance to the arts and entertainment industry. These include topics such as First Amendment rights, government financing for the arts, and the provision of arts education within our public schools. In 2016, Tim created the successful The Right to Bear Art, B-E-A-R, to bear art, art, 
Is that that's correct, right? right? To arts. Yeah. Right to bear arts. Campaign for the Creative Co Coalition to draw attention to the critical need for arts and arts education in our country, and I couldn't agree more. So, would you please all welcome Tim Daly? Um, like he said, thank you very much. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I, I couldn't have said any of that any better. Um, I just hope that when you were doing open heart surgery, you weren't listening to Sweeney Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street. That would have been a little scary. Before I begin, I just want to take a moment to uh, introduce and acknowledge, uh, or actually have Robin Bront, the CEO of the Creative Coalition, introduce and acknowledge our staff and our delegation. Oh, yeah, yeah. So short. Thank you so much, Jim, everybody, Congressman. We love being here. Also, I have two kids, went out of state to Indiana University. I support your state. Did you put plenty of money in Indiana? Plenty. Um, that being said, uh, I wanted to just quickly introduce our delegation. Uh, we have a delegation, a class of delegates from leaders from the entertainment industry, leaders from business and industry, who take time out of their days to do something that is so, it's not self-serving. It's not like any other lobbyist or advocacy group that you'll see here in town, because you know what? These guys are cooked. They're good. They have their arts education. They're here only because of the next generations for your kids. There's no other reason why. And I want to introduce our class of 2023. Um, you can just stand in your place. Uh, Jacqueline Barnett, Esquire. Uh, Astrid, Astrid Yvette Nicole Brown. Astrid producer Gloria Calderon Collins. CEO Brian Collins of the Collins Company. Astrid Grace Caroline Curry. Nina, Nina Dutta Esquire, <laughs> Billy Eichner, great actor, Wet, Wendy Fetterman, the most Tony Award woman, winning woman on Broadway, so get your show to Head of uh, IMDb Communications, Emily Glassman, if you are on IMDb and you need something corrected, <laughs> she, is, she is in charge of about a thousand people. Uh, the great producer, Lindsay Goffman, who is shooting a show now called The Company You Keep, which is about the CIA in Washington. I know everybody wants to see it. The great actor, comedian, and now show off-Broadway, Judy Gold. <laughs> actor, the great actor, Justin Hartley. <laughs> actor, Jason Isaac. Producer, Ianti Jones. Actor, Emma Kenny. <laughs> Financial, financial advisor extraordinaire John Lovett, yeah. best-selling author John Levy, yeah. actor Wendy Mallon, yeah. actor Dr. Mallon, yeah. of Paramount Rob O'Neill, yeah. producer director uh, Tommy Oliver, yeah. Christy Cambianchi from Intel, yeah. actor yeah. Sophie Perez. Dentist and philanthropist again, if you need anything. <laughs> Justin Renat. <laughs> Business leader Beth Riley. <laughs> actor Reagan Rivard. Uh, actor Reagan Rivard's mother, Holly Rivard. <laughs> uh, producer Jared, Jared Ruga. Actor Colby Smothers. <laughs> actor Evelyn Swallow. <laughs> Howard Upchurch, former CEO of Haynes Underwear. Here for underwear. Uh, actor B.D. Wong, who's actually also directing Judy's hit one woman okay, show. It closed already. Oh, yeah. oh. Well, let's get some financing to Yes, you'd like that. Uh, and I think that's our gang. All right. Thank you, Robin. Um, okay. Well, for those of you who don't know what the Creative Coalition is, it was founded about 30 plus years ago 
by a prominent group of uh, people in the arts and entertainment industry who thought that they had an obligation to give back because of the unique platform that they've been given. Um, and we believe that it's our uh, responsibility to um, educate and motivate and inspire our audiences and ourselves to motivate around issues of public importance, primarily arts education and public arts funding. Um, and I want to make very clear that we are not an organization that only supports artists. We support art as an essential human need, and we believe that every person, and especially every child in the United States, should be exposed to and participate in the arts, not so that they can become professional artists, but because we know that it will make them better human beings. Um, there's a lot of dry statistics that are, I think, pretty profound about uh, the, the efficacy of arts education. Um, and I thought when I first came here that if all I had to do was spout those things and the NEA would be quadrupled in budget immediately. <laughs> but um, more than that, uh, or beyond that, uh, there is uh, an element of arts education that I think is profoundly important to all of us, which is what it does to us as a culture and as a society. Uh, arts are the common language of our humanity, and they are, are uh, it's something that bonds us together and does not pull us apart. Um, so to begin, I just want to talk for one second about Tucker Carlson. <laughs> so, so a couple years ago I was here and I did an interview with Tucker, um, and uh, I knew what I was getting into. I knew it was going to be kind of a hit job because Tucker was telling everybody that art should not be paid for by the federal government and that like he liked them fine but why pay for them he said I like fishing too but you know the government doesn't pay for that well the next day I went to uh, the office of um, Jim Simpson I think who was the congressman from Idaho Mike Simpson. Mike Simpson sorry congressman from Idaho and he said Tim I saw you on Tucker last night you did pretty good I mean he was rough but you really held your own I said thanks Jim he said how come you didn't tell him about uh, fish and wildlife I said what he said, yeah, the, the budget for fishing is $4 billion. I was like, are you kidding me? And meanwhile, the budget for the National Endowment for the Arts is like 200 plus million. So it turns out the federal government does pay for fishing, uh, which is great. But also, I think we need to recognize and uh, encourage the federal government to increase their spending for the National Endowment for the Arts. We're very happy with what happened last year and there's a modest increase that is on the table for this year that we hope goes through and uh, we hope you'll all support that. Um, I wanted to tell a story about, you know, I, I met a guy named Matt who's the head of the restaurant, um, what is it? Yeah. Restaurant, Association. restaurant Association. And um, he was telling me about a performance that his kid was in who uh, has Asperger's and uh, how beautiful it was. And it reminded me of this fr friend that I made uh, when I was speaking at a conference, um, basically doing this same spiel that I'm doing here, talking about the importance of the arts. And this is a very high-powered businesswoman who um, had this huge corporation. And she had a son with severe autism. He had about two words, and she was determined to have this child succeed. She was going to have him read, going to have him write, going to have him do math, and she was pressing him and doing everything she could to make sure that he would have those skills. She heard me speak, and I don't think this has anything to do with me, but, but she was sort of at her wit's end, and she heard me speak about the arts, and she thought, well, why don't I let my kid participate in the arts? And long story short, he did. Not only did it completely open him to the world, he is now a professional artist and a public speaker. And I'm not suggesting for one minute that every child that has autism will have that kind of result, but um, what it did for this child was absolutely profound. And uh, I think that it can be as profound for people that don't have uh, a mental disability or any kind of challenge in that way. So. Um, it's important to remember that arts are one of the most effective change agents available to humankind. Um, and it is vital that we change the narrative about arts in this country because we always think of them as something extraneous, something extra, a luxury item. I like to say they're not dessert, they should be on the plate of the main course. Um, and they might be as delicious as dessert, <laughs> but uh, they should be on the, on the same plate. So. <clears throat> 
Forgive me if you've heard this before, but for those of you who are new, this is what I know. Art is like love. It is impossible to define, but we all know that we need it. Art is like air. It surrounds us. We're not always aware of it, but we quietly breathe it in and it sustains us. And finally, art is like food. We're not going to like everything that we taste. Some of it we're going to think is gross. Some of it we're going to think is absolutely delectable. But we cannot live without it. So it's important to remember that arts are essential to our culture, to our humanity. And they, in fact, are the emissaries of our culture and our humanity. It's funny to me that um, I know a lot of uh, folks that I've dealt with over the years have been opposed to public funding for the arts. And yet, when a foreign dignitary comes, or they go to a foreign country, what's the first thing that happened? Out come the artists, the singers, the dancers, the poets, and they all do something to show these people who we are, and, and what we believe in, and what we feel. And uh, I think that bringing that into our consciousness, being aware that artists can have that ability to bond us as human beings, is really, really important. Um, okay. I wrote down a couple of things, uh, and I don't, I don't know why I, why I did it, because I usually don't, but I was thinking about a couple of things, and one, a couple of quotes, and one is that um, uh, Thomas Merton said, art enables us to lose ourselves and find ourselves at the same time. And I thought that's a fantastic thing, because think of all the times that we've been in a crisis or had a challenge, and we listen to music, or watch television, or go to the movies. It's an incredible relief. Twyla Tharp said uh, that, uh, let me get this right, art is the only way to run away without leaving home, uh, which I thought was also great. And it occurs to me <clears throat> that one of the things about uh, the arts that is especially important right now is that you may have noticed things are changing extraordinarily fast. And there's the dawn of artificial intelligence, which is going to be a huge sea change for the entire world. So I think it is really important as manufacturing jobs are going to machines and driving jobs are going to machines and machines are doing all these things that we keep creativity alive in our population. And as I've said before, uh, every child is born an artist. Every child is born with an incredible imagination, an incredible creativity. But those things are a muscle. And the way to exercise that muscle is in the gym of the arts. Um, I, two days ago, I was at my six-year-old grandson's recital at his school. And I saw these amazing kids singing Beatles songs. And the joy on their faces. It, it was just extraordinary. Um, and. You know, we've done a lot of work uh, with uh, veterans organizations that use art as uh, a therapy for PTSD. Um, and I think there's a national crisis right now of PTSD around the pandemic, especially in young people. Um, and I think that being involved in the arts is critical for those kids because uh, I don't think we quite know yet the depth of the, uh, the trauma that that period of time created. Um, I also want to say, what else I want to say? Oh, this is what I know. Um, that I, I have seen, and I'm sure many of you have seen, what happens when a kid takes part in the miracle of creation. When they create something and you acknowledge it, when they take ownership of a poem or a song or a dance, uh, and when they are able to tell their story uh, and they have cr that they have created and take ownership of it, then they take ownership of their future. And for some reason, we don't continue doing that with our kids. We do it when they're little, but we must continue to do it throughout their young adulthood because it will help them wherever they go in life. Um, the other thing I know about human beings is that we will somehow find beauty. We'll find it, even in the darkest times. And I think that our search for beauty um, should not be shamed. It shouldn't be something that's done in secret. We should have nothing but pride in the most incredible of human traits, which is creativity, and because that leads to the expression of our souls. And I don't mean to get too woo-woo about it, but it, it is true, I think, that 
um, we are at our best when we connect with each other, when, we, when our humanity is acknowledged in each other, um, and that's the way we can make progress, um, which is what we all need to do, whether we like it or not. Um, anyway, uh, that's about all I have, and I just want to say thank you to the Ripon Society. Thank you, Jim, so much. Thank you, Larry, just, so much. I, I want to finish uh, on this. Supporting the arts is an unbelievably patriotic thing to do. It is an American thing to do. And we need to embrace that even more because we are, in terms of all the developed countries in the world, woefully short in how we support the arts. I was talking with Jason, and he reminded me that England, a country of a sixth of our population, spends $1.6 million on the arts. Billion. Billion, billion sorry, billion. $1.6 billion on the arts. We spend 200 million and change. So the, the acknowledgement that our culture needs to have that as, uh, as a cohesive uh, uh, movement is something that we all need to embrace. Anyway, uh, let's do the best we can. And thank you all so much. And uh, am I giving out hats? Is it an auction? Yeah, well, you do it. Anyway, thank you all very much. Thank you.